found as far as painting the paper mache boxes. Um, here's a finished product right here. I've got um, a black velvet ribbon and I've stenciled in on the top right there and it's I don't know if it's coming out in the video but I have a light pink I think it's called ballet slipper and I'm going to talk about the paint in just a minute and I found um, basically these rhinestones come on a sheet and you just cut them and put them on a row and I also have some stenciling right there and there's another example of this little guy and his little bow and it's painted pink and we have some just some craft paper or just some some paper stationary paper that you'd find in your craft store so I'm going to show you a little trick that I found um, when painting these little wooden knobs okay here we go so here's my secret um, I use this green styrofoam that you get in the flower um, the, the silk flower section in your craft store and I use a toothpick and basically you want to use the toothpick to hold your knob right there and then you can really work with the brush um, and get it situated and then you also can let them dry like this just kind of like a cake pop if you don't have one of these and you really don't feel like getting one you can use um, uh, just an old um, I say old because mine's old maybe you have a new one um, a paint um, paint palette make sure you're using um, the areas where there's no wet paint and once you have your knob if you have to do half and then half so you can let it dry um, I've tried I tried this with my smaller knobs and it works great you can just let them dry right in there and then they don't roll around so this as you can see I need to do the underside on that the pink still there you go so this part of the video I want to show you how I paint um, the knobs with this little toothpick as a device and my paintbrush and you can already see this one is going to be able to spin around Let's see if you're getting that on video so this makes it so easy to do you don't have to get I don't wear gloves because I typically don't get my hands dirty possibly a little bit goes on um, a little bit gets on my hands but that's fine I just wipe it off with a baby wipe or go I go wash my hands this one I had put a little bit of a texture on the first layer this is the second coat so I'm just gonna texturize this one just a little bit I think I used a sponge the first time but that's okay I think just to get the color on the bottom I'm going to um, get a couple hairs coming out this is not my favorite paintbrush actually this is my least favorite paintbrush I should have grabbed the other one um, but anyway I hope this tip is helping someone out there when I discovered it I thought it was just really cool um, so when you're letting it dry just poke it back down in there and then you're good to go you could even paint it like this right here without even holding it um, let's see how I'm gonna get rid of this brush actually and use this sponge let's see how this works now I think we're gonna need to hold it just to give it really for the first part what I do is I hold it like this and then you can give it some paint dab it in there this is the folk art um, ballet pink is the color I think he's getting too many bubbles so we'll just smooth it out for a minute this is a really light paint so I, I probably would do two coats over the primer and now this is the point where what I would probably do is if I had the time and I actually do right now because it's around summer break I would go ahead and put it on the toothpick and let it dry before I tried to do the under part if you really wanted to rush it you probably could but you know I have the time right now so um, there's no need for that we could just do half and half so I'll just quickly do this one I want to show you the difference between the folk art paint folk art and the Martha Stewart paint just the difference in the colors 
Um, and like I said, I'm going to do the second part of this video is going to be my comparison between the two. I want to show you how what the difference is between the smoothness and the ease of use on the wood for each paint. It's it's pretty interesting. Okay, so I'm going to let that part dry. Here we go. Looks like a cake pop. And here's the Martha Stewart paint, which is a really nice color. Very similar, maybe a little bit more purple in that. Okay, so here's my system when I'm painting the wooden craft boxes that you get. I found this one years ago at Michael's and I just found it in my closet and I thought, well, let me go ahead and paint this. Um, I did the outside first on this one and I'm going to leave the inside natural on this because I'm going to keep this one for myself. Um, here's how it looks all together. There's one coat of primer um, and after I paint it, I put a stir stick right there Actually, while I'm painting it, I put the stir stick right there, and then you can finish painting and let the paint dry that way, and then the lid doesn't stick to the bottom. Um, so this is a flower, and I want to show you how adorable these wooden knobs are going to look when it's done. Let me take the craft stick out here. And it just adds so much. You know, you can decorate it however you like. And I just think that's such a cute look with the little knob when, once it's glued on there. Um, so you can use E6000 um, glue gun, any kind of glue. I like the E6000. I think it sticks a little bit better. Here's another shape. Um, this is the just the circle wood box from Michaels. I used a little toothpick right here to stop this from sticking together after I painted it. Okay, so I've got a good start on the inside of these boxes here. I've got the Martha Stewart paint going on this one. You can really tell these boxes are rough on the insides even after I sanded them. So I'm not sure what to do about that at this point. We'll see how it goes. really like the way this paint goes on too. Um, and like I said, the color is a nice rich pink, almost like a bubblegum pink. this point I'm going to let the inside dry, so I'm just going to put it over onto my other table so it can dry. Okay, and I've got a little bit of the Folk Art acrylic paint right here. It's already going in the inside here, and we'll just finish this up. So there you go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.